back to my channel. It's your girl Erica, aka Paperback Girly, and I'm here today to show you guys my favorite looks of 2022. I am currently getting over a little bit of a cold. I literally got sick like two days ago, two, three days ago. Today I'm gonna be talking about all of the books I absolutely adored this month, or excuse me, this year. Now, this list is gonna be very small because I only started reading again in September. I picked up four books in September. It was the catalyst to my reading journey, and I'm so happy to be back reading like I was in middle school. Today, let's see how many I have. I have 10 books to show you guys today, which I think is actually a pretty good amount of books for only having been read for what? I've only been reading for four months this year, so to have 10 top tier books that I would recommend to literally anyone and everyone, that's really good. So the first book that I would love to recommend to everyone is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. And I know this book got a lot of hype a couple years ago during like COVID and like the height of book talk, I was actually really surprised by how much I liked this book. This is a big book, 450 pages. This is the biggest book that I've read since I've started reading again. And I blasted through this book. I did a whole reading vlog on it. It hasn't been posted on my channel yet. I think I want to re-edit it and I might post it in January whenever uh, Hellbent is released. But oh my goodness, Ninth House is such a good book. I cannot wait for Hellbent to come out as a right now this book stands at a 4.5 stars on my goodreads only reason why i did not give this a five star is because it ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger it makes you want more this is about a woman in her late 20s she's like 29 years old what i love about this story is how unique it is it basically has like two storylines in alternating chapters she has two options she can either go home with gabby who is the best friend or she can go home with ethan who is the high school boyfriend and we basically get to see the, how events transpire with both decisions. And I think that's so unique. This was such a unique story. Yeah, that is another one that I really loved this month or this year. And that was Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Bunny is such a mind-blowing read in the sense that like you, I still don't know if any of what I read was real. I feel like you'll never know your opinion of this book unless you read it because I don't think anybody could properly convey their own thoughts about this book. And I think that's what I loved about it. I love having to like come up with my own conclusions. I loved having to like research stuff, figure out what the heck just happened. What did I just read? I was just so confused, but like in the best way possible. I was perplexed in the best way possible. And I still don't know how I feel about this book besides the fact that it's on my top books for 2022. So Bunny by Moda Awad. I think I rated this four out of five stars. You have to read it to get your own opinion about it. Okay, next, in the month of October, I read The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy, and this was a five star read for me. This is also the most tab book I have. This book got me into annotating and tabbing books, and I annotated and tabbed the pants off of this thing, okay? But there's just so much in this book that I connected with. One day, Hart is not feeling that great. He delivers a body to Mercy and they have like a really weird interaction. She calls him some mean names and it kind of hits him close to the heart. He ends up writing this, like not even addressed to anybody, he just writes this letter. He addresses it to a friend and, and then signs it off as from a friend. And it magically ends up in Mercy's hands. It gave me such whimsical vibes. Felt like I was watching like a Disney movie mixed with like Bunny or like a horror movie. It, it was just so, it's just so good. I love it so much. The love story in this book, how we get to connect with the characters, how we learn about Mercy and Heart, and then like the backstory behind her Mercy and Heart's like motives. Oh, it just like, I fell in love with this story so much. I fell in love with this book. I cannot get over how much I love this book. Five out of five stars, The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. Absolutely loved it. This is another five star read for me. This book is actually very, very interesting and unique in the fact that I had never read a book about a woman who was dating a ghost. She's basically like falling in love with a ghost. And it's just so interesting and I've never read really a book like this. I just think that because it was refreshing and it kept me on my toes and it dealt with grief in such a beautiful way and it made me understand what grief could be like. It's bantery and witty and funny in the sense that like the romance of it is like it's good. It's definitely weird to catch on to a little bit because it's like you're dating a ghost are you delusional but then kind of like adhere to the plot of the story and i kind of fell in love with it icebreaker by hannah grace this book is so much more than just a romance this is about anastasia and nate and they're both like competitive on the ice 
So she's a highly competitive figure skater and he is the captain of their school's hockey team. I go to the University of California, Maple Hill. So they end up having to share the same ice rink and it kind of causes some problems between the two. It definitely gives me enemies to friends to lovers vibe. Uh, but I love number one that it takes place in California and it takes place at a UC. I read this on Kindle Unlimited and I loved it so much I bought it on the actual paperback copy. What I also love about this book and the reason why it's just more than just like a romance story for me is that I love the friend group in this book. I love like Nate Hawkins' friend group. I love reading all their texts and um, learning more about the characters that way. And then I also love how it talks about Anastasia's troubles with like her image and like body dysmorphia, her eating habits and things like that. Just like things that it goes through and it talks about that rather than telling you, it shows you. And I love books that show you rather than tell you. And like, you kind of have to like put the pieces together yourself. Really love the communication in this book. I mean like, man, these characters are so emotionally mature. I thought I loved toxic characters that could never figure out what they wanted, could never really understand what was inside their minds. But when I read Icebreaker and I read about characters that were willing and openly honest communicators, it made me want to be better in my own relationship, that's for sure. Alrighty, so we're down to my last four books that I would recommend slash best books of the year. The next book is The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. This was a reread for me. This book I've rated five out of five stars and the reason is that because whenever I read this for the first time in high school, I was obsessed with it. I stayed up all night reading it. It is a bigger book, 456 pages. So it is a bigger book, but I read this in two to three days. I blasted through this book because I absolutely loved it. And it was able to elicit the same emotion and the same like awe shock and just like craving for more that it did whenever I was in high school now. And that was what, 10 years ago? So the fact that this book could make me feel the way that it made me feel Chef's kiss. Okay, Michelle Hawkin, you are doing something, Miss Dang. Go read this book. The next book that I really, really loved is Tis the Season for Revenge. And I rated this a four out of five stars. Ending fell a little bit flat for me, but I loved this story a lot. Um, it's not entirely super Christmassy book, even though it does look like a Christmassy book. It does take place during the Christmas time, so it has like a Christmassy aspect to it. This is about Abby Keller. She ends up making this plan to like get back at him and get revenge by sleeping with his boss. Ends up finding out that the boss, Damian Martinez, is actually a lot more mature a lot better of a match and a lot more of a man than her ex could ever have been. Love the friend group in this book. Her two best friends, I love them so much. I love Damien Martinez. I love that he calls her Rubia and Naranja. I really did like this book a lot and I just thought I would add it in this because why not? You guys will see these next two books being read in my Christmas readathon. I read, finally, Addicted to You. I did not rate this one five stars because I want more. I rated it 4.5 stars. I don't think I can last that much longer. I went out last night and bought Ricochet, but told myself that I wanted to wait because Ricochet takes place near New Year's and I'm going to Big Bear and I know I want to take some books with me to read in Big Bear. I think I'm gonna wait just a few days. It's the 22nd, or no, no, the 23rd right now and we leave for Big Bear in six days. I think I could wait six days. I think what I really liked about it is the fact that I never once found it cringy. There was not a single point in time in this book where I thought it was cringy. There's not a single point in time in this book where I was like not wanting to read it, where I wanted to put it down. I literally read this in like five hours. The fact that this is book one in how many books? Nine or 10 book series, sign me up. And this last book, I actually just finished this morning and I'm surprised by how much I liked it. Uh, this is Regretting You by Colleen Hoover and I listened to it on Audible and I also read it physically. I finished this this morning after starting it last night around mm, six o'clock. I think what I loved most about this book is the uniqueness of it being like a mother-daughter story. Also, I wasn't expecting like the drama that came in this book. I love the little subplots of romance in this book and I loved the progression that we see between the mother and the daughter in this story. I think it's just so unique and I loved it a lot and I rated it five out of five stars. Colleen, basically, girl, you did it again. You revived my hope in you because there had been a couple books that I had been reading by Colleen Hoover recently that just haven't been like meeting my standards compared to the other ones that I've read and you reminded me girl you remind me reminding you it should be the name of the title of this book reminding you
so yeah those are my favorite books so far of 2022 i know i still have about a week left in the month of december as of right now these are the best books that i've read so far thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you maybe found some good books that you might want to try and happy holidays i hope that your christmas time and or holiday season has been amazing safe healthy <laughs> okay i'm hoping that now you guys are sick and happy Every day, 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 every day,